We are back with another Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke challenge and in this video I'll be attempting to complete Pokemon Sword using only the rock type and on only one attempt. Now it's time to get this challenge started. Now we begin the game with Chairman Rose here just kind of going over a brief kind of history kind of overview of the gym leader Pokemon trainer challenge. Uh, definitely one of the cooler concepts that they that they introduced in these Pokemon games. Um, he's giving this speech here in a football stadium, soccer stadium. Uh, yeah, so like one of the um, one of the cooler concepts that they introduced was this Pokemon Trainer Challenge, which had like a bunch of trainers just going off and trying to complete the gym leader challenge. Which I thought I hoped that they would continue with Scarlet and Violet, but unfortunately we did not get that in this form. Um, but yeah, a lot of the flack, a lot of the criticisms that this game did get when it was released, you know, rest in peace to the National Dex exclusion, um, definitely left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. But this game's actually not too, too bad, especially with the epic gym leader music. Uh, so we begin our journey here by meeting up with our rival and his older brother, Leon, who's the current champion, rocking out with the golden child of all the starter Pokemon, Charizard. Uh, just kind of ramping up the crowd for some reason with all his sponsors on his cape, like people who just wear capes in this in this game in this world. Uh, so on, he lets us kind of choose our uh, starter types, our starter Pokemon here. I decided to go with Score Bunny because I wanted to have a a type that was a rival type that was strong against rocks. So uh, Score Bunny was the obvious choice to not make it too easy for myself. Uh, so after I, we chose Score Bunny, our rival hop here, he decides to go with Grookey, which will give us, which I would assume, I always assume that it would give us a challenge, uh, especially facing off against rock types early on. Um, this looks like a game ending uh, choice, Grookey is. So after that, we go on a catching spree. I decided to catch Choodle as the first Pokemon, instead of also to Dreadnought, which is. Part, parts rock, but also very weak to our rival's uh, Pokemon. So catch him, you named him Ripley, and we just continue on this whole catching spree. Uh, right after, I immediately catch and find a Rog and Rola. Uh, even though I can't really evolve it in this game, I thought it would be nice to have, to have the sturdy ability. Now, since I do have the, uh, the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra, DLC, I don't remember the names there. Uh, since I have the DLC for these games, I'm able to travel to use that DLC to find this Rock Ruff, which again, I'm just kind of going around just trying to catch every Pokemon that I, I possibly can for the first gym fight because he uses uh, grass types, which is going to be detrimental to my team here. So I, named, I nicknamed Rock Ruff Hicks as I go and find uh, a really cool right before the Galar Mine number one, which due to its evolution's typing, I decided hey, this would be a great catch. So I catch it, no problem. I'm definitely going. The plan was to use this really cool uh, during the gym fight. So nickname Shaw. As we continue on, and right before the gym fight, I definitely manage. I definitely you know evolve this really quickly into a Carcoal uh, just to get that added fire type so we can have that um, type advantage against the gym leader here. So up against the gym leader and you know all this awesome music and these awesome uh, little cinematic entrances here. Uh, the plan here was to definitely use Carcoal since it's part fire type and I decided for this run uh, definitely going to use Dynamax and well, I think it's just Dynamax, I think I have access to. Um, definitely going to plan on using Dynamax um, for these runs, even though I don't think it would change much. Um, it'll still, I think it'll still provide a nice challenge using a Dynamax versus not using Dynamax. Um, so getting into the battle here is, it was going to be a pretty easy fight going into this with Milo. Um, for one thing is, all of my team was going to be uh, you know, super weak against grass types, but at least Cargo had some resistance to just hit with normal damage. Uh, so start off with Cargo land, and the game explains the Dynamax phenomena as he starts with Gossiflor. And I immediately get uh, poisoned going in as I go for the flame charge, as the idea here was to increase my speed as much as possible. 
um, as it goes for the round, not doing too much damage. But that poison status effect definitely, um, definitely was not good on this card for this challenge, unfortunately. So going with another flame charge it was a two hit KO, going for that speed boost yet again. I uh, was able to take out that gossip floor with relatively no problems. Um, so up next is his last Pokemon, Elgigos, but that poison is definitely starting to start. I'm starting to feel that poison damage. Um, definitely considering if Carpool can actually live any Dynam any Dynamax move that this Elgigos can actually throw. Uh, so I decided to just stay in, go for the Dynamax, go for the Dynamax Max Flare, um, hoping I can outspeed it. Uh, and thanks to this little animation kind of spoiling who outspeeds who. Um, definitely have that outspeed advantage now. Now that I solidified, I know for sure that this Carcoal can outspeed Elgigos. Um, and allows me to go for that max flare. The Dynamax, the only major benefit for Dynamax is that what increased move um, hit with the max moves and also the increase in hit points. So not too, not too bad. Uh, as Milo just Dynamaxes his Elgigos here. Um, if this Elgigos was faster, then my Carco could have been so much trouble. Uh, but thankfully that wasn't the case as I go for the Max Flare. Now the Max Flare, definitely I thought I was gonna, I was hoping that I was going to uh, just kind of one hit KO this thing, but it does a little bit less than half. But fortunately, it does activate the sun, um, as Milo just kind of gets scared there with his little quote. Uh, so his Elgigos goes for the max overgrowth, and I'm curious if I can actually survive the hit here, and it turns out that I can. And even though I am poisoned and that damage is going to rack up, uh, the max overgrowth does um, activate the grassy terrain, which heals all Pokemon touching the ground at the end of every turn. So. Hoping that's enough to kind of uh, balance out the poison damage as I go for another Max Flare, this time boosted um, in the sunlight here. But still, it's not enough to take out this Elgigos, leaving it with such a sliver, sliver of health um, as the Elgigos goes for the Max Overgrowth yet again, this time taking out my Carcoal, unfortunately. Now I was thinking, okay, now at this point with Carco going down and with my only fire move and every other Pokemon I have being weak to grass, I decide I can't go with any of my others, but I do have Newt here who does have Sturdy. So I'm hoping, I am hoping that Rock and Roll has enough um, attack, has a high enough attack stat to really just take out this, the remaining health of the Eldegoss as it goes for the max overgrowth here, taking Rock and Roll all the way down to its sturdy. Now that sturdy definitely uh, saved me, so, and the Smackdown definitely um, enough to take it out. And that earned me the first gym badge, but unfortunately, Carcoal had to pay the cost, even though I don't think Carcoal would have been useful for any other gym badge, actually, so. Um, definitely, definitely a trade-off. Now a trade-off that I would like to make as Rock and Roll here learns Iron Defense in place of Harden. Uh, so with the first gym badge down, I decide to continue just heading out um, with these like these little cinematic animations. Um, with the next gym leader being Nessa with the water type, definitely had to formulate some kind of strategy, just kind of thinking ahead here. I uh, definitely had to figure out some kind of strategy to deal with Nessa. Um, but one strategy that I decided to do was to actually uh, go with the boosted Dreadnought Sweep. So going with the Swords Dance uh, and just trying to uh, beat all of our Pokemon in one move essentially. So before that we kind of have to replace this Caracol. Um, so I just decided to catch a Dwebble here which is probably a very underrated Pokemon in my opinion. Um, Named of Vickers, as we just added to the team, just having another uh, another body here. So heading into Ness's bat, Ness, uh, heading up into Ness's battle here. Decided that I'm um, definitely gonna go for the Dreadnought um, kind of sweep here. I think it's gonna be my uh, best option, as Robin Roller did uh, die off screen and 
Trudeau did evolve off screen. Uh, so going into this match, I kind of did have the confidence. I think the only thing that I was pretty weary about was whether or not that Goldeen could actually confuse Dreadnought. I know that Goldeen does carry a water pulse, which has the chance of confusion. But as long as my Dreadnought could, like, if it, even if it did get confused, if it can break through that confusion, I feel like we stand a pretty good shot of just sweeping through her team here. Uh, so I send in my Dreadnought, which I've never used Dreadnought before or Shootle in any Pokemon playthrough I've ever done. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, it's a great Pokemon, I'm not gonna lie. Like, um, this Pokemon does actually put in the work. So first turn here, I do go for the Rock Polish because I, I want to outspeed anything just in case. Uh, and I did find the leftovers to give as well, just to get that passive uh, health recovery. Uh, as I go for another Rock Polish, just to see if I can outspeed this Goldeen. But with two Rock Polishes, with plus four Rock Polish, um, plus four speed here, decide that now is the time. I think I can probably outspeed everything. But unfortunately, I do get the confusion, uh, as Leftovers does give me that passive health boost here. Uh, so for the next turn, I decide to go for the Swords Dance to just start building here. Um, trying to just, just hoping and praying that I can break through this confusion. Uh, so the first turn, I broke through the confusion, no problem. Got the Swords Dance off, got the attack boost as Goldeen goes for the Water Pulse yet again. And my Leftovers really, um, putting in the work as this Water Pulse is not really doing too much damage for it to be a problem. Uh, I break through the confusion a second time and go for the Swords Dance again, getting now have plus four in attack and thinking, okay, um, at this point I can probably start um, attacking as this Gleam goes for the agility. Thinking that that's going to be bad, I decide, okay, maybe I should um, just go for the attacking moves just so I can uh, trying to prevent this Goldeen from racking up too many uh, stat boosts here. So with the confusion yet again, I break through it surprisingly and get, go for the crunch and thanks to uh, Dreadnought's ability, all biting jaw moves um, have an increased damage. So I was able to take out this Goldeen in one shot, which I'm pretty sure I was going to be able to do anyway without that ability as she sends in her Aracuda here. Now again, the same strategy, I'm thinking that I'm going to outspeed this Aracuda, so I just go for uh, the crunch, I break out confusion finally, so I don't have to worry about that anymore, so I go for the crunch, I outspeed, and I take out that Aracuda in just one shot. Um, so things are looking pretty good here, um, definitely no, no issues as uh, Dreadnought is recovering most of its health back now, almost at full health again, thanks to Leftovers as Nessa is going to send in her last Pokemon, her very own Dreadnought. Um, so deciding to definitely uh, Dynamax here so I can get that max damage with that max geyser. Uh, just being neutral damage. Um, oh no, I just want to go for the max darkness instead. Um, so just going for that uh, Dynamax here, just trying to get as much damage off as possible. Because I'm thinking, because Dreadnought does have Pretty high defenses, um, but just hoping that I can just take this thing out in one shot with my plus four attack boost here. And thinking that I'm definitely going to outspeed because of these animations and also because of the rock polishes I was setting up earlier. So I had no uh, no concerns here. Um, thinking that even if her Dreadnought does survive one attack, it's not going to one-shot my right now, unless it's a very lucky critical hit. And even then, I don't think her Dreadnought could actually take out this my Dreadnought one-shot with a critical hit. Uh, so going for the Mark Max Darkness, it does survive, but it takes away, it takes off a, quite a bit of her health and lowering her special defense as well. Um, so her Dreadnought, she goes for the Max and Geyser herself. Um, I have no concerns here. Thinking that, okay, I'm just going to survive this, and it doesn't even take me down below half. Um, with the leftovers recovery, and also with her Max Geyser just activating the rain here. Um, so with leftovers, I do get some health back as I go for Max Darkness yet again. And this one is definitely going to end the fight and destroy her Dreadnought. So, 
yeah, the second gym badge down definitely um, was one of the uh, one of the other early problem gym leaders that I was concerned with with this run, especially with having dark types. But Dreadnought is really um, was really one of those Pokemon, one of those good Pokemon in this generation. Um, so yeah, definitely saved me in this battle because if Dreadnought, if I didn't have Dreadnought or if Dreadnought fainted, um, definitely would have ended the run here. So with Nessa defeated, I decided to I decided to catch more Pokemon because definitely need to uh, build out this team um, as I just get the second gym badge here and um, definitely with the wild area it was a it was a challenge to decide when to catch Pokemon when to when to actually like fill Pokemon within the team so. In the wild area, I do manage to find a Rhyhorn. Um, now, I know I can't fully evolve this, but having a Rhydon on the squad would still be a great help. Uh, one of the OG Pokemon here named Lambert. Um, so I decided to add Rhyhorn to the team, even though it can't reach its full potential, but it would still be great. Um, in Gallarmine number two, ran into a Binacle, which with being part water as well with Dreadknife, thinking, okay, Kabu is never going to be a problem, shouldn't ever be a problem either. Um, so we managed to catch the Binacle and name Ripley too um, for, you know, the other Ripley that was in um, Alien Isolation. Um, so outside of the mine, we run into a Pseudo Widow, which again, Pokemon I've just never used in any playthrough really. Um, decided to catch this pseudo just to have just another body on the team. Uh, can't hurt just to pad the team up a little bit. Um, so after catching pseudo Ludo, my uh, Rockruff does manage to evolve. And I evolved it into the Midnight form of the Lycanroc, only because of, um, it just looks cooler to me. And even though I know that having the other one would be a great for the speed boost, but... Um, no, I just decided to go for which one. Everyone looked cool. Um, so heading into Kabu's fight here, I definitely didn't have any concerns uh, going through my mind since he's the fire type gym leader and I have a team full of Pokemon who can just absolutely destroy his. Uh, the only challenge being that his Pokemon are a team of fully evolved Pokemon at this stage in the game. Uh, with the Arcanine, Ninetales, and the Scorch. Now, um, I definitely wasn't going to leap with the Dwebble here. Um, so the idea was definitely just to overwhelm with my rock types. I've known full well that once I get to the Scent of Scorch, since it's being bug and fire, it having that quad, um, that quad weakness to rock types, I didn't think I was going to have any problems whatsoever. So Kabu, he leads with his nine tails here as I just decide to lead with my Lycanroc. Um, just, just to spread out, you know, the one that I use, not make it just the Dreadnought show. Um, so I go for the Rock Tomb just so I can, um, oh no, I go for the How, I guess, to, to up my attack to kind of pull off the same strategy that I use with Dreadnought. But unfortunately, Lycanroc does get burnt uh, with the Will-O-Wisp here, so the burn does drop it to, uh, what, minus two attack as the Howl brings it up to minus one. So I just go for the Rock Tomb, knowing that eventually I am going to switch out this um, this Lycan Rock. But before I do that, I want to get as many speed drops as possible on this uh, Nine Tails. So I just go for the Rock Tombs, and surprisingly, it does take out uh, a little bit more than half here as a Fire Spin and the Burn continually do damage to me. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, so maybe it won't be so bad. So I just go for another Rock Tomb. It doesn't miss, and I get the Nine Tails. I get, I take down the Nine Tails uh, with relatively no uh, difficulty. Uh, as he, as the Burn definitely starts to stack here. Um, he sends in his Arcanine, which you know definitely did cause problems because of its you know intimidate ability. So thinking, okay, at this point. I'm just going to use Lycanroc to, to lower the speed here because anything I send in is definitely going to be slower. Uh, so I go for the Rock Tomb and it does almost half even with the uh, minus two to attack and the burn definitely um, still stacking up damage here. So I decided, okay, let's go for the for one more Rock Tomb here, see what happens, see if I can live another hit. 
as I go for another speed drop and I get the speed drop and take it down to the red as it goes for the agility essentially nullifying the last two turns um, the last two turns of speed drops for himself uh, so I go for the rock tomb knowing thinking that it was gonna go for uh, a potion so I just go for the rock tomb it doesn't miss and I'm able to take out the arcanine um, so that's like I'm taking out two Pokemon here even being burnt and um, yeah just kind of not even being faster didn't get the flinch hacks with the bite there um, so even with the level up I would have survived the burn damage there so now that Kabu is kind of waxing poetic sending in his last Pokemon I know that I didn't I definitely didn't want to sack my Lycanroc here um, so I go for the switch because uh, I definitely wanted to save this Lycanroc after it, it just put in so much work against Kabu, I was thinking, okay, I have to definitely try and save this Pokemon as much as possible. Uh, so instead of going in for the Dreadnought, which is what I probably should have done, I decided to send in Pseudo Wudo because I don't really use Pseudo Wudos like that. So I was just thought, oh, okay, let me just, you know, try this out and see how well it goes. Um, so Kabu there is waxing poetic as I usually do, as he just goes for the Gigantamax. Um, yeah, so the Gigantamax, he's definitely going to be fast, you know, this is, is this Gigantamax? I can't remember, it looks like it. Uh, so he just goes for the Gigantamax, sent to Scorch. Um, as I knew full well that his sent to Scorch definitely would have outsped my Sudowoto, and I forgot to Dynamax here as it goes for the Max Flutterby. Flutter, flutter by. Um, so it takes more than half, but it does lower my special attack, which doesn't really matter as I go for the uh, the tearful look, thinking that it would you know have increased priority, and he's using special moves anyway. So unfortunately, it goes for another max move, and it takes out my pseudo Wudo, which definitely um, I caught it and <laughs> definitely let it faint pretty early. Um, so after that, I send in my Dreadmaw as just kind of um, going for the Dynamax, making sure I go for the Dynamax this turn. And he's probably on his, like, I think it's last turn of the Gigantamax, so... I go for the Dynamax, thinking that Dreadnought is not going to have too much of an issue against this Sense of Scorch, uh, being, you know, fire, uh, being rock and water. So, after the Dynamax being full health, um, just getting that, even that, um, further health boost here, uh, surprisingly I outsped it, uh, going for that Max Geyser. Uh, and then just brought it down way to the red here, but the most important thing is I did activate the rain, so just in case it does decide to go for a fire move, it'll do even less damage. As it goes for another Max Flutter, Flutter Y, I can't even pronounce that name for some reason. Um, and it goes, just goes for the uh, special attack drop here. And since Leftover is still equipped to Dreadnought, just get a little bit of boost at the end of the turn as Sensor Scorch's uh, Dynamax turns runs out and then it reverts back to normal. So given that, I just decided to go for the Max Darkness because I have no um, no concern at all that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take this thing out anyway. So that, since so Dreadnought took out the Sensor Scorch and that goes the third gym badge. And we did lose Suda Widow here, but unfortunately like that's, that's not gonna be a problem. Um, you know, win some, you'll lose some. So, now that I essentially lost one Pokemon per gym leader at this point is the going rate. Um, so after the gym fight, up next is B. I want to say her name is. Um, so since she has fighting types against my rock types, again, it'll be a, a uphill battle for me. Um, as we kind of just shake hands here and I finally get this fire badge added to the collection. So up next here is B, and again, since she has the fighting type, it definitely is going to be a challenge going into this because fighting is uh, strong against rocks, uh, but rocks do can counter that since they do have pretty high defense stats. So it's almost it's almost a wash. Um, so just going into this fight here, B sends in her Hitmontop. 
as I decide to go into my uh, Dreadnought here to kind of go for the same strategy that I employed with Nessa with, you know, increasing the speed stat and also increasing the attack stat just to uh, get a sweep going on before, you know, the fighting type really just starts pummeling my rocks into the ground. So seeing, so she reveals that she has counter, so hoping that she's going to go for the counter again. I just go for the swords dance knowing that, okay, since that since she's using counter, I might as well go all in with the swords dances. Um, but then she reveals that she has revenge, which takes me down really low here, which would be a two hit knockout. So I decide at this point, okay, I just need to go for, hopefully I can outspeed and just go for the attacking move because... I can't set up as much as I um, as I would like against this hit on top. So luckily, I was able to outspeed. Um, Dreadnought does have a surprisingly high um, speed stat uh, for a Rock Turtle. Um, so just getting that extra boost there, the extra leftovers uh, gain there at the end. And she decides to go in for Pangoro, uh, which is probably one of my favorite Generation Six Pokemon. Uh, so I decided to go for the Razor Cell once again, and surprisingly, I do outspeed. So I don't look at any of the stats or anything, or make any calculations. So at this point, I'm just I'm just surprised that Dreadnought's outspeeding like like she is. So the Pangoro goes down to one Razor Cell and one move here, as um, Dreadnought's leftovers does does the work. So she sends in Surfetch next, and again, I just decide, okay, hopefully I can outspeed again, go for the Razor Shell, and Razor Shell doesn't miss, so the Razor Shell, oh, this, this time I'm getting a critical hit, but I don't think that critical hit would have mattered, um, but thanks to the Swords Dance boost, I was able to take out that Surfetch in one shot, um, and the critical hit, so again, with that Leftovers boost, I'm starting to get back some health, not enough to survive a hit, if... Dreadnought isn't faster, so she decides to send. She decides as if she had a choice, but it's her last Pokemon, this Champ. Um, and again, the whole Gigantamax. Um, oh, what's the word? The whole Gigantamax thing. This is definitely going to do. Um, so deciding here what I wanted to do, and really just thinking, okay, is this Dreadnought fast enough? Because. If Dredna is slow, is slower than this Machamp, then it's essentially going to be a wash here because I don't think I don't, I don't have anyone else on this team who can really deal with this Machamp effectively. So just kind of going through the, just kind of just thinking about what I should be doing here, uh, just kind of deciding, okay, let's just go for the Dynamax, just go for the Max Geyser. Uh, to get that stab as much as possible and wondering if, um, I think at this point I was wondering if do max moves retain the special physical of the base move. Um, so kind of deciding that and thinking long and hard about it, decided to go for the Dynamax and finding out here that uh, Dreadnought is actually faster than this, is going to be faster than this Machamp. So at this point it's a matter of hoping that this Max Geyser can take out Machamp in one shot here and hoping that um, you know Max moves retain their their special and physical category. So all of all of this this entire run is on the line with this one exchange that's coming up as she di Gigantamaxes her Machamp with this new Gigantamax form here, which unfortunately was a a, a gimmick that Definitely didn't pay off or have any real um, effect in the game, unfortunately. Um, so she decides to go for the guy Jet to Max, and I'm going for the Max guys. They're hoping and wishing that it's going to take out one shot, and I get very lucky in that it, not only does Dreadnought outspeed, but also um, you know the Max moves retaining their other category here. So since Machamp didn't have, doesn't have too good of defenses anyway, physical defenses anyway, uh, this Max Geyser was able to take it out in one shot. So winning the battle here with Rhyhorn learning Drillhorn, deciding if I should get rid of Bulldoze. Um, so that is the fifth, no, the fourth gym leader down now. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, we're at a pretty good point. We're at a very good, we found our... We found our stride here, especially um, trying. We did take out a lot of the difficult people 
early on with rock types. And the rock types not being the um, the best typing in the game, but still it, it does put in the work here. Um, so after the battle, Dwevel does manage to evolve into a Crustle, which is a pretty good design actually. Um, pretty good design, pretty good Pokemon, so can't wait to use that. So yeah, a lot of these Pokemon still never used before, so it'll be good to learn about them in these kind of runs. Um, so now just gaining that fighting gym badge here. Um, the fourth gym badge and just kind of at this point being at a high of okay this run is not going to be as hard as I, I anticipated it to be. So given that we definitely um, head on over to the fairy type gym leader Opal here um, and her battle was definitely going to be easy especially if you can remember um, all the quiz answers during the battle. And if you get them right, you get stat boosts, and if you get them wrong, you get stat drops. So all you really have to do is just remember the correct answer, and your Pokemon will be boosted, and her battle will be very easy uh, to overcome. So she starts the battle by sending in her Galarian Weezing, which is a very, it's a very um, interesting design. Like that is a very, very interesting Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, so I decided to lead with my Lycan Rock after finding enough um, what, watts to get Iron Head here to teach him so make this battle against the Fairy type gym leader that much easier. So after the first turn we get this um, question of knowing her nickname and going for um, just kind of thinking about it, also known as googling what these answers are, uh, either the magic user or the wizard. Uh, I think it was the wizard, if I'm remembering correctly in this little um, audio recording playback. Um, so just kind of looking to see what the answer is. Um, just going for the wizard. Uh, definitely getting that answer correctly and getting that speed boost, which uh, for a Lycan Rock, for a Rock type, super critical. Uh, as I go for another Iron Head, which takes out this Weezing in two shots. So with the first Pokemon down, at this point I'm thinking, okay, I can just do a Lycan Rock, go for the Lycan Rock sweep, um, as she sends in the Mawile here. Now, this Mawile did have Intimidate, which was pretty unfortunate. Um, but I decided to, to switch at this point, uh, just kind of sacrificing that speed drop. So just kind of deciding what Pokemon to send in here. I uh, decided to go to the tried and true, the tried and true Dreadnought for the team. Now Dreadnought definitely has become probably one of my favorite Pokemon of this generation, only because of this this Rock uh, Nuzlocke playthrough here. Um, I can see why a lot of people did like this Pokemon when it was first revealed. So as the Mile goes for the Iron Defense, I decide to go for the Swords Dance just to kind of match its defense boosts. Um, as it goes for Crunch on the next turn, not really doing too much damage and also not getting the defense drop as my leftover recovery recovers you know, some, some of that damage. So the next question is finally rolling in and um, whether or not she likes pink or purple and the answer being purple. The special defense does get raised sharply, so I don't think that was going to matter too much, but hey, it's nice to have. So for now, on the next turn, I go for another Swords Dance here just to kind of go for that um, that Dreadnought Sweep here strategy as the Mawile goes for a Crunch again. And luckily, I did not get any defense boosts or defense drops um, from that Crunch, so I was able to just go for the Razor Shell since I didn't have any concerns of being um, slower than this Mawile. But unfortunately, that Mawile does have some great defense as it did survive Razor Shell on a sliver of health. Um, so again, the Crunch didn't drop my defense. My leftover is gaining some hit points back. So I decided after that, I should probably go for another Sword Zance given that um, she does have more Pokemon on her team and I want this to be a pretty quick, pretty seamless battle. And she goes for the Crunch and finally gets that defense drop um, as my leftover still kicks in here. She's still not doing too much damage, so I decided to, okay, let's just go for the, um, 
the kill here with the razor shell, just trying to finally take out this Maw Wild after setting up. Um, so with the Maw Wild down, I can finally move on. Um, that Maw Wild could have been a huge problem since it's part steel and steel being strong against rock. Um, if Dreadnought couldn't take it out, then we might have had some real problems. Um, so her next Pokemon she decides to send in is Togekiss. And Togekiss, I believe, would have been faster, but then another question rolls through with how old she is. And obviously, go for the younger answer. Um, you get the uh, the attack and the special attack boost, which I wish I would have known. I wouldn't have gone for so many uh, swords dances when I did. As this Togekiss goes for the Draining Kiss here, which doesn't do too much, but one thing about Draining Kiss is that it does restore health as well. So I go for the Rock Polish to get that speed boost because at this point I'm thinking, okay, none of the Pokemon are going to really hit uh, Dreadnought that hard, especially with that special defense boost I got a few turns ago. So on the next turn here, I go for the Razor Shell, which takes out this Togekiss in one shot leaving her down to her last Pokemon here. Now her final Pokemon after this Leftovers boost and Dreadnought just really um, putting in all the work carrying this team on its, on its little turtle shoulders. Um, finally I guess the caffeine from the tea is kicking in and she sends in her final Pokemon this Alchemy here which honestly I totally forgot about this Pokemon at this point so I didn't know what this thing could do. So I decided to just go for the Dynamax uh, Max Geyser here. So turns out I'm faster, which is a great relief. Um, didn't know the stats, couldn't, can't remember the stats for this Alchemy. So um, what this thing could throw at me, who knows. Um, so I decided to go for the Dynamax here, just get that, that, that HP boost um, and also the, the Max Geyser boost, the Max Move boost. So as she's going looking creepy, she decides to Gigantamax this little Alf Creamy Puff Ball bowl of cream thing here um, into just just giant wedding cake looking Pokemon. Um, so with this, I definitely didn't feel any um, any concern at all since I know I'm going to be faster now. And since it's a fairy type, it was a um, a gamble whether or not it would be a defensive or a special defensive, so unfortunately for me it was um, not very physically defensive as this Max Geyser does take it out in one shot, earning me the fifth gym badge at this point. Yeah, I think it's the fifth one. The fifth gym badge at this point, so I, this run is really going very well given the typing here. Rock type's definitely not my favorite type, but um, definitely making them work here. Uh, as Pressel does learn X Scissor here after the fight. So now that uh, this gym battle is over, we can start thinking forward and thinking about the next gym battle, which is Gordy, since this is Pokemon Sword. Um, so Gordy uses the Rock type as well, so I'm thinking, okay, since I have Binacle and uh, Dreadnought on the team, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm glad they didn't really slow the game down uh, due to the, the walking speed of Opal here, which could have really um, slowed down a lot of things with this game. Um, but fortunately, we just kind of go through this little cutscene of me finally receiving the Fairy Gym Badge, um, just adding it to the collection and thinking, okay, I can I can go all the way here. This is this definitely a possibility. Um, so after getting the TM for Draining Kiss, which I'm never going to use, um, decide to go off and head off and immediately just fight the next gym battle. Um, yeah, this that walking speed just has the fourth generation written all over it. It's crazy. So after the gym battle, I decided to finally evolve my Binacle into a Barbarical because, you know, Barbarical is definitely on the same on the same plane as a dread ball, being a nice attacker that has some great boost moves. So on our way to Gordy's gym, we run into a Soul Rock here, which again is a Soul Rock, Lunatone, those Pokemon never really used before. Uh, so I decided, okay, it'll be a great addition to have a physical, you know, psychic type on the team, psychic rock type on the team. 
Um, so I catch the Soul Rock before heading into Gordy's gym, bat gym battle here. Now with this being the sixth gym at this point, um, definitely things are going to get harder, but at this point I think our strategies are pretty locked in. Um, so with this, I definitely wasn't feeling any kind of concern because of Dreadnought and Barbarical being part water, Rhyhorn being part ground. I didn't have any um, any issues going into this fight as he just breaks out these awesome athletics to send in his Barbarical. I send in my lead with my Dreadnought here. Now, to begin this battle, I definitely go with the tried and true uh, stat boost here. I decided to start off with the Swords Dance instead of the Rock Polish since I'm thinking that for the most part I will be faster than most of this Pokemon just base anyway, but um, very worrying here. His Barbarical goes for the Shell Smash which lowers his defense in a special, uh, special defense but also increases his attack stats and his speed sharply. So given that, he's now definitely faster as he goes for a Razor Shell, which really hurts and brings Dreadnought down to the red. And I go for my own Razor Shell, which does take out this Barbaric Home in one shot, thankfully. Um, but since I do have the leftovers, I do recover some health back, but it'll be um, quite a question if I can actually outspeed the rest of his Pokemon and really take advantage of the Sword Stance boost there. Um, so Shuckle comes in and I decide to go for the Razor Shell again, thinking that, okay, with the plus two, should be able to take out this Shuckle as well with the, um, the stab boosted Razor Shell that's super effective against it. So I was able to take out that Shuckle in one shot, thankfully. Um, Shuckle definitely would have caused some issues with Dreadnought with all of its stat moves. Um, so the leftovers, again, giving me some health as Gordy does send in his next Pokemon, being the Stone Joiner, um, which is a very interesting concept for Pokemon as well, with Stonehenge come to life, I guess. Um, so I go for this Razor Shell here, hoping for the one-hit KO, and I definitely get it. Um, again, this the speed and this plus two attack. At this point, I'm just hoping that he doesn't break out another Barbarical-like strategy or something, and or have a Pokemon with such high defenses that it really does survive just one, you know, plus two Razor Shell. Um, so with both of his Pokemon down now, uh, he goes for his final Pokemon of Colossal, Rest in Peace Caracol. Um, so I do know that this Colossal does have a Steam Engine or whatever its um, ability is to convert water type attacks into speed, but it doesn't nullify those attacks if I'm remembering correctly. And that memory here is what's going into this move. Um, because if I was wrong in the nullification, then it could definitely, it could potentially take out Dreadnought in one shot. Um, as Gordy goes for the Gigantamax um, Colossal here. And it's unfortunate that we couldn't use Gigantamax in a normal playthrough. I forget, I think it's a post game. Um, ability that we're able to do as the gym leaders are just able to Gigantamax um, but that's neither here nor there so if his ability does cancel and nullify out water incoming water attacks then I'm in trouble so I go for the max geyser and thankfully it doesn't it really doesn't nullify it and I'm able to take it out in one shot since it's fire and rock and having that quad weakness to any water type move um, and the plus two attack boost definitely helped as well. Um, so now with his Colossal down, I am able to get the Rock Gym badge. Um, so yeah, so that's the sixth gym down. Two more to go before I can um, complete the, the Elite Four tournament or the Pokemon Challenge tournament, whatever it's called. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm probably not going to be losing too many more Pokemon in this run. And, you know, my Pokemon are pretty much set in their strategies and their use at this point. You know, I'm just using Dreadnought for the most part, which is kind of um, not ideal for me, I would say. But after the Gym Badge, I do manage to finally evolve my Rhyhorn into a Rhydon. Um, 
but unfortunately this is as far as it can go so for the most part my team is fully evolved at this moment for uh, taking on oh man I forget this guy's name Piers taking on Piers here and his dark types now against his dark types I knew okay since I had a Crustle um, I didn't really fear a lot of his Pokemon um, I know that you know, rock types, barbarical, they can learn like fighting type moves as well. So I had a pretty good strategy going into this. Um, I definitely wanted to kind of spread my team out and just use different Pokemon for this battle. So I decided to lead in with my Rhydon, uh, not realizing that Piers does have a Scrafty, which is part fighting. And not only that, but his Scrafty does have Intimidate. So I decided to stay in and go for the hammer arm, but unfortunately, this Scrafty does carry Fake Out, which flinches me. Um, I'm just kind of breaking through my sturdy there. Um, so I decided to stay in and go for hammer arm again as it goes for the Brick Break. That doesn't do even half health, as my hammer arm does a little bit more than half health. But I do get the speed drop, and don't really imagine, not really concerned about the speed drop since. I'm not expecting Rhydon to outspeed any Pokemon anytime soon. So it goes for the sand attack as I go for the hammer arm and the hammer arm connects uh, and just kind of destroys Crafty's remaining HP as I go for, as I get that speed drop yet again. So with the accuracy drop and the two speed drops, um, I'm thinking, okay, should I uh, keep Rhydon in, especially as Pierce goes for the Obstagoon? Um, now, Obstagoon is definitely one of those Pokemon that I did not remember too well, so its abilities and capabilities, all that stuff, um, definitely was relearning during this match. So I decided to swap in Rhydon for my Crustle here, since it's part bug, and since Dark is re weak to bug, I was thinking, okay, this will be the you know, perfect matchup, especially with Crustle's high defense stat, kind of, you know, Soaking in a lot of this Obstagoon's potential moves here, but it goes for the Obstruct, which I thought was just a, you know, a version of Protect. But unfortunately, with Obstruct, um, it does lower your defense harshly at that. So I was thinking, okay, this is this is definitely going to, I'm definitely going to keep crustling for the long term here, as his Throat Chop does significantly more damage than the first turn there. So I go for the X Scissor and it takes it down to about a third health even with a crit. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, I should definitely swap in here. Just kind of swap in and evade those defense drops as much as possible, nullify those defense drops as much as possible. Um, so just kind of considering who I should go into at this point. Um, and I decide after a lot of thinking um, what the strategy should be here. So I decided to go into Barbarical, hoping that this Obstagoon is probably going to go for Obstruct again, giving me like a free turn of swapping essentially. But it goes for the Throat Chop and it doesn't do half health, so I'm thinking, okay, everything should be fine here. So hoping that it goes for the Obstruct again. I go for the Shell Smash, which you know lowers my defense and my special defense, but on the flip side, it does increase my attack stats and my speed stats sharply. So it does go for the Obstruct again, so essentially I got that free move off as I go for the Razor Shell, as it goes for the Obstruct one more time. Um, and then this is just going to decrease my defense, but I'm hoping here that with the Shell Smash, um, I really wouldn't need it too much. So going for the Razor Shell on the next turn, I was able to take out that Obstagoon in one shot here. And now Piers is going to send in his final Pokemon, which you would think since Obstagoon is his, is his um, signature Pokemon that that would have been his last one, but no, he decided to send in his Obstagoon pretty early. Um, so his last Pokemon being this Malamar here, which thinking, okay, it's a Malamar, it's not going to be too much of an issue. I know it has Contrary, so I was thinking that wasn't going to affect stats that were already boosted, already changed. So. I go for the Razor Shell, thinking that's going to take it out in one shot, but it survives on a, a sliver of health as it goes for the Foul Play, taking out my Barbarical, unfortunately. So, uh, it, it sucked to lose Barbarical in this fight, but I had to kind of clean up here and just go for Lycanroc just to, to get that, you know, that revenge kill in. 
Um, so I uh, just decided, okay, just go for the rock slide, get that stab boost. Anything I used, um, I knew it was going to take it out if he didn't heal up. And fortunately, Pierce didn't heal up, which I don't think any of these gym leaders actually healed up in any of these fights. So that's, that's something I just now noticed, and that's not a welcome change. Um, so with Peter's here defeated, um, for the seventh gym badge won. Oh, not yet. I forgot he had another Pokemon. Uh, so he sends in Skun Tank. Um, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, it's, you know, poison and dark. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so I just go for another Rock Slide, hoping to get that, that flinch off. It doesn't happen as it goes for the Screech, which I'm thinking, okay, I can just connect with Rock Slide on the next turn and just, you know, clean up the last of his Pokemon here. Uh, so I go for the Rock Slide, and it doesn't miss, thankfully, as it just takes out the rest of Skuntank's health. Finally, at this point, winning me the Gym Badge. Um, with, so with seven Gym Badges in, um, and losing Barbarical, unfortunately, uh, I know I do have like a another Rock Water type on the team in Dreadnought, so it wasn't too much of a loss. But it, it, don't, it does always suck to lose Pokemon this late in the game here, especially um, when you when there aren't that many Rock type encounters um, in this game. So now finally getting the seventh gym badge, I can start thinking about the next challenge, which Raihan, if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Um, I know his whole shtick is the um, the double battle gym battle. So hoping that I can come up with a good strategy to kind of defend against that since I know he uses a lot of different types and those types, a lot of the types he uses are strong against rock. So it's definitely going to be a uphill battle um, to get the eighth gym badge, but onwards and upwards. So heading into Raihan's gym in the last gym fight, um, definitely had the, um, didn't catch another Pokemon to replace Barbarical, unfortunately. Um, but going into this gym fight, I did have pretty, pretty good confidence in the team. Definitely Dreadnought's strategy of, you know, the sweep strategy that I've been using for most of the, most of the run here. So Raihan decides to start with Gigalith and Flygon, two Pokemon that are pretty, um, pretty dangerous to rock types, even though Gigalith is a rock type itself. Um, rest in peace, Rock and Rolla. Or Pokemon I still couldn't have obtained in this game though. Um, so his fly or his Gigalith does kick up the sand stream, the sandstorm. So it doesn't really affect my team too much negatively since we're all rock types anyway. Um, so deciding, okay, I should definitely focus on this Flygon for sure. Um, because the Flygon I'm feeling it with its ground type is definitely going to um, cause the most problems. For my team if left you know if left unchecked so with dreadnought i decided to go for the swords dance to kind of build upon that strategy here and with crustle i decided to go for the x scissor just to get some damage off um not doing half health but wasn't expecting it to really do too much damage to begin with um so giggle goes for the uh, what's that move called stealth rock um so to get that passive damage for those entry hazards there so in this next turn up, I decide, okay, I should start going for the attack. Dreadnought should be good as Flygon goes for the Steel Wing, which doesn't really um, take Crustle down to half health, but it does get the defense boost just very luckily. I never really see that defense boost with uh, Steel Wing like that before. So that Steel that um, defense boost def definitely um, saved Flygon there from Dreadnought's liquidation. But Crustle did get the uh, X Scissor to take it out as Gigalith goes for the body press there. Um, so the leftover is still just recovering that 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 health over time as Raihan does send in the Sandaconda. Again, it's another pure ground type of remembering correctly, so Dreadnought should be able to take it out, no problem. So with Crustle, I decided to focus on Gigalith as um, Dreadnought also going to focus on Gigalith since that body press is, might be a huge issue. I'm thinking it would be a huge issue. So I went for the double move there because so, I was thinking at the time that Gigalith 
does have Sturdy as one of his potential abilities, but I forgot the fact that it did kick up the Sandstorm in the, in the beginning of the battle, so... Yeah, the, the, that double move was an overkill, but not too much of an overkill because Dreadnought did take it out with one liquidation anyway. Um, so Santa kind of goes for the glare here, which really does cripple my Dreadnought. Um, so the Crustle does go for the X Scissor, which doesn't do too much damage. Um, but this paralysis on Dreadnought will start to, I'm hoping that it can just break through the Parahex as he sends in his last Pokemon's Duraludon. Now, this Duraludon was definitely a huge problem for this team, seeing as it was Stealing Dragon. Um, that steel typing and its high defenses being such a huge issue for me. Um, so I'm contemplating whether or not to go for the Dynamax, even though Dreadnought is paralyzed here, thinking that it might be a waste if I get, you know, paralyzed, I might waste the turn of the Dynamax, and eventually just waste Dynamax, um, waste my Dynamax for this battle. So I decide to just lay off the Dynamax in this turn just so I can burn one turn of his Dynamax as well. Um, so he definitely goes for the Gigantamax. Uh, for his Duraludon here, um, which again is a huge problem for this team. Uh, once we start getting hit by these max moves, um, it will it will be a test of defensive capabilities at that point. Um, so after the after the Gigantamax, Santa kinda does go for the protect, but I as um, Duraludon does go for the max Rockfall for some reason. Um, he does target Crustle, which I was surprised that he wasn't targeting, that he didn't target Dreadnought at all. Um, so, I go, so Crustle goes for the Bulldoze, so hoping to decrease Duraludon's speed as much as possible, because for some reason this Steel Dragon is faster than my Pokemon. Um, so just go for the Liquidation, just try and get any, any stat drops I can uh, with my moves on this Duraludon, because I definitely didn't want. I definitely didn't want this Duraludon to become a uh, a passive issue for my team. So with Crustle and Dreadnought looking pretty um, pretty bruised here, Sandaconda does go for the Earth Power, taking out Crustle. Unfortunately, and there was no Pokemon I wanted to really swap into that. I guess I could have swapped in Soul Rock, but with its low hit ability. Um, but I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Um, as Duraldon does go for the Max Steel Spike, which almost takes out Dreadnought. So Dreadnought lives on a little bit of health as I go for the Liquidation on Sandaconda, finally taking it out. And all of my um, focus and my resources can go to this Duraludon and taking it out. So as the second turn of its Gigantamax kind of burns, um, I'm able to send in another Pokemon here after I get this Leftovers boost. And luckily, thankfully, I have yet to be paralyzed um, from that glare earlier. So at this point, I'm just kind of deciding who to swap into next here. Um, I'm thinking Rhydon because of that hammer arm and that earthquake. Um, but I decided to go into, <coughs> excuse me, I decided to go into Lycanroc um, as the stealth rocks damage just kind of digs in. So I go for the Dynamax here. And I go for this, wait, no, do I go for the Dynamax? So I go for the Dynamax here and deciding which moves to actually use. Um, so I go for the Defense Boost with, with the Max Steel Spike or go for the Max Darkness for the neutral damage, but I decided to go for the Max Steel Spike. So um, with this animation, I'm, not, I'm thinking that I'm not going to be faster, um, but we'll see. Uh, so I decided to Dynamax the Lycanroc here is the best option against this Duraludon because I know that its turns are about to be over and um, I can just start working on it and it won't have any more stat boosting and stat dropping um, attacks. So with the Max Steel Spike, I am able to increase Lycanroc's defense, which will be a plus here. Hopefully I can, um, you know, survive any hit that this Duraludon is going to do, but it just breaks out the max knuckle, which I wasn't expecting, uh, which is super effective against Lycanroc, but thanks to the defense boost, it doesn't really do too much, and unfortunately, Dreadnought does get affected by the paralysis there. 
Um, so <clears throat> it, they're all done. It's Gigantamax turns do run out. Um, fortunately, as I go for the max darkness, start to go for the neutral damage here. Uh, as for Dreadnought, I go for the jaw lock. Um, at this point, I just wanted to take this thing out because it is starting to become a real problem for this team. Um, so I definitely didn't want this stat boosted Duraludon to really get too many more um, kills in, but it definitely targets Dreadnought now. And taking out Dreadnought since they're doing it at low health anyway. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I have two Pokemon left, one of them being a Soul Rock. Uh, so I decided to send in Rhydon here because Rhydon with Earthquake has the stands a better chance, especially after Lycan Rock's uh, defense boost there. Um, so I go for Earthquake, or uh, I go for Hammer R on that Duraludon, seeing if I can't finally take this thing out. And I definitely could have to play this battle smarter, but oh well, hindsight is 2020. Um, so with the Max Darkness there, lowering its special defense, which doesn't really matter. Duraldon going for the Iron Head, which doesn't kill. And then Rhydon missing the Hammer Arm, unfortunately. Um, it was a very, very crucial Hammer Arm there. Um, but fortunately, Lycanroc is faster anyway, so uh, Lycanroc is able to clean up with the Crunch here. Uh, finally taking out his Duraludon with the critical hit that came way too late. Uh, finally uh, netting me the last gym badge here at the cost of two very good Pokemon on my team. Um, so at this point, losing my, you know, my foe's starter in Dreadnought. At this point I was, I was thinking, could I even um, bring this challenge home? Uh, so, just all like the, even the path to Winden where the final tournament is going to take place is like a foe victory road. Um, so at this point, I'm just like, should I catch more Pokemon? Should I just wait till I get to Winden? I think at this point, I was just going to wait until I got to Winden just to see, um, you know, what I can encounter. So on my way, actually, after looking for what felt like forever, I was able to finally find a Stone Joiner. And since I'd never used one of those in a playthrough, I was like, okay, might as well catch it to kind of, you know, bolster the ranks again. Um, so I decided to catch it, name it David, and add it to the team. Um, so this is what starts the descent into the, the end game here. So going up against this random trainer, thinking that, okay, Lycanroc's Crunch will be able to take it out pretty quickly. But no, this Claydol had other plans and took out my Lycanroc um, with Earthquake, with Earth Power, and a combination of Hail. And then I ran to another trainer who took out Soul Rock and then is taking out this right my right on here with Water Pulse Pelipper in the rain. So at this point I have one Pokemon left, which is the Stone Joiner, and battling another trainer here, which is Stone Joiner doesn't really have the moves to really damage a ride on. Um, so just going for the rock slide here, hoping for the flinch hacks um, that just never really come. So Right on goes for the bulldoze, nearly taking out David, but the hail here is going to clean it up. So that is the end of the run. So yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, could have done things a little better. Um, but no, like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.